In the previous video, we talked about the rules and the violations of the rules. We were talking about that. We classified this rule as seen when there is a random error, this rule is seen when there is a systematic error, so violated when there is a systematic error. So we need to understand what are those conditions in your analytical systems that may produce static or random errors. So we have to now align those rules on top of your analytical system. So let us see how we can do this. Once again, I bring this picture to you. The, there is a stable monitoring system. Please underline the word stable. Stable is extremely important. One side of your equation is health stable. How can you balance your other side? So you have to make sure your QCs are health stable. We talked about how to hold your QC stable, how to maintain your internal controls with integrity in the one of the videos. So please follow the rules and unless you are doing that, you will never be able to judge your analytical system. If both sides are not stable, then how can you analyze, assess one side using an already wavering QC system. So we are assuming that now your QCs are stable while we are talking about all these rules and rule violations. So we have seen this uh, picture earlier also and uh, the, we, we said these columns here depict your uh, inaccuracies and the rows depict your precision and when you are looking at the first this one it is a perfect bullseye all your points are on target that means accuracy and there is precision because they are all close together and you look at the second picture you see that your points are all close together which is really good precision but it is straying away from the target. So accuracy is getting compromised here. And you look at this picture which is imprecise but it is more or less going around your target. Your target is this, it is circling that but are scattered. And you look at this picture, they are all away from your target and they are all scattered all over the place. So it is neither precise nor accurate. So these are the errors that we are talking about, systematic errors and random errors. And what are systematic errors? Uh, errors of inaccuracies, these are systematic errors and imprecision is your errors of your random nature will pr produce that imprecision. And so what are these reasons? for your systems to shift and either go into this systematic error direction or the random error direction we will see in the next pictures. This is once again the same picture, this is an accurate and precise and this is the inaccurate but pretty much precise and this is your inaccurate and imprecise. There is a lot of dispersion, it is far away from your target and it is a lot of imprecision. It is far away from the target but they are close together. This is a really good accurate and precise picture and now let us examine the inaccuracies first. We talked about both inaccuracies and imprecisions. Let us discuss inaccuracies first. We have looked at the rules that indicate shifting accuracies. To, to recap, what were those rules that we talked about in the Westgard rule system? We started off, uh, most of the rules are directing you towards inaccuracies only. You would start with a 1-2-S which would be a start in your may be a start of your systematic error, 1-3-S could be start of a large systematic error. You talked about 2-2-S is direct, directing you towards systematic error and then there are the larger rules like 3-1-S, 4-1-S, 6-X, 8-X, 9-X, 10-X, 12-X, these 70, they are all indicative of some systematic error happening in your system. And we have seen the shifting accuracies are denoted by shifting means, very important. If you remember the Gaussian, you also saw that how will you make an assessment of your inaccuracy building up, the mean is getting shifted. Now uh, think about the pictures that we saw of, on the Gaussian curve and also the LJ where the mean is shifting and we have seen that inaccuracies are indicated by biases on the LJ graphs and before we go into the changes in the analytical system that produces these errors, we have to understand the kind of systematic errors that can happen. There are two kinds of systematic errors possible. One is the shift and the other is the trend. A shift is a sudden, upward, abrupt uh, change in your mean. Your mean was here all the time and suddenly you see your mean shifted up. That's such a systematic error is termed a shift and this can be upward or downward. This diagram is just showing a shift upward but it can be downward also. 
and a trend. Trend is a gradual and downward or an upward trend. 70 is one of your rules that will pick up a trend. So, systematic errors, there are two types, shifts and trends. And we will explain each of these once again. Shift is an abrupt change in the control mean, a sudden and dramatic positive or negative direction. Change in the test system performance will automatically happen with it and causes for shift. So, now what we are more concerned with is the QZ rules of course, but they are only indicating something. So, what is that something that they are indicating? That is of more concern because that is where your corrective action is directed towards because QZs are only to enable you to detect your errors in as much as the corrective action is done and your system is stabilized. So, when you are seeing a shift, where would you look? You would look at the light source. You will look at the reagent formulation, major instrument maintenance, any change in incubation temperature more applicable in enzyme analysis, room temperature changes, failure in the sampling systems and reagent dispensing. These are the areas that you might want to look at if you see a sudden shift in the, in the analytical system. I hope that is clear. This is the keys to all quality control. You are running quality control to detect these and if you do not understand these, there is no point in running the controls. Controls are aimed towards understanding your problem. That is the bottom line. Unless you understand your problem, there is no point in having a QC program. So, these would be the areas that you want to look at and if you have got other issues which are creating these rule violations, you have to understand your systems, what exactly is happening, like light source, why is the light source getting affected, was there an electricity outage, do you have a stabilizer, is there a UPS, is there a requirement for a UPS, reagent formulation, was there a change in the reagent and the vendor did not let you know or you never read the kit insert to see whether there was a change in the formulation. Is there a gap in your training there that you are not looking at your kit inserts and product inserts regularly? So, all these things, major instrument maintenance, there was a breakdown and the, the engineer came, he changed something, he never told you what exactly he did and you never found out and then your QCs are just going, doing the shift. So, you need to understand why these things are happening and what can you do about it. Incubation temperature, there is generally an incubation chamber within the machine, is there a problem in there, why did that happen? Room temperature, do you require an AC, is your controlling system, room temperature controlling system inadequate? Ask yourself all those questions whenever your QCs are showing some kind of a shift. And now we will go to the next thing is a trend. Trend is a gradual loss of reliability in the test system, cause deterioration of the instrument light source, but it is not a sudden one, it is a very gradual loss. Your light source will have a certain lifespan. Do you know what the lifespan of your light source is? Do you know that it needs to be changed? Do you want to look it up somewhere? Do you want to ask your manufacturer, okay, is it how long is this light source uh, strong enough to do my analysis? And gradual accumulation of debris in the sample reagent tubes. Is your technician doing the preventive maintenance as prescribed by the manufacturer? Is there a scheduled maintenance by the manufacturer that has not been done? Do you want to look at uh, calling uh, your manufacturer or the support service to take care of your machine? Aging reagents. How are you storing your reagents? Is the temperature maintained in your storage fridge? Ask yourself all those questions because this is what you are running your QCs for and gradual deterioration of control materials. I have put it in red purposely because deterioration of control material is something which you are just, it is a self-defeating thing that you are doing to yourself because your control material is, is what is safeguarding your analytical system and if that is not preserved well, it, if you are not following the manufacturer's instructions, there is pretty much no point in do, having a quality control program. And gradual deterioration of the incubation temperature, especially in the case of enzymes and deterioration of calibration. Very important point, you need to track your calibrations and calibrations are, uh, I hope you have the basic idea about why you do calibrations in tests because all your reagents deteriorate and they lose their potency over time. So, you calibrate a test maybe today and your equipment will make a calibration curve and if your reagent is deteriorating over 
the next 10 days, at the end of 10 days, your calibration curve no longer may be valid for that analysis. So, you may need to recalibrate. So, you have to understand what is the frequency of calibration that you need. Deterioration of QZs, trends in QZs is the biggest and the best indicator that calibration schedule can be drawn up because every time I do my calibration and after 10 days or 15 days I see it is slipping that warrants a requirement for a calibration. You have to make the schedule. You can follow the manufacturer's instructions regarding the reagent stability and how much of calibrations, what is the frequency of calibrations, but your QZs also direct you towards setting your calibration frequencies. So, understand all these concepts. This is the importance of the periodic monitoring. That is why I said it is not the technician's duty to understand these things. These aspects have to be understood by the technical supervisory team who will have to invest time in looking for shifts and trends. All those rules that we talked about in the WestGuard rules, even if nobody is monitoring you on that, even NABL may not concern with raising a non-conformance because you didn't follow the 70 or 10x, but it is in the good interest of your patients that you look at these rules, put your material together, look at your analytical system and find out is there a problem in any of these things that we talked about, either whether it's a shift or a trend and remedy that. So that is a very good thing to do regardless of your regulatory requirements. If you do this, it will be in the interest of the patients. That is about your systematic error. So, it is a cap recap of it. We already have seen this. I would not dwell at it. Lack of accuracy or a building up bias is indicated by shifts or trends and you have seen what are the reasons for it and you have to think through all these things that we talked about. You have to invest time with your analytical system if these things are happening. Bottom line here, it is not the responsibility of the technician to understand these things, it is the responsibility of the supervisory staff. And if you invest time in that, you will be doing a great service to your patients. Let us look at the other kind of error, imprecision. Imprecision is the amount of variation in the measurements or a random deviation away from the expected result. Imprecision is computed as random error and we will discuss this later. And again, just as we saw in the systematic error, the causes where we saw the, the reasons for shifts and the reasons for trends, we also need to look at the reasons for imprecision. Imprecision or the random errors are extremely difficult to predict and understand. Unlike systematic errors, we said there are really remedial action available for systematic errors. You understand there is a defect in calibration. You can actually come to a conclusion about the uh, systematic errors and you can take remedial actions, whereas random errors are very difficult to detect. However, there are some causes which we have to routinely look at when you are seeing random errors and to re reiterate these is random errors are generally picked up by your technicians and they should be um, enabled to understand how to pick up random errors. and some systematic errors also. So, looking at the reasons for random errors and uh, these are the common causes improperly mixed or dissolved reagents, air bubbles in reagents and reagent lines, sampling of reagent syringes, pipette tips not fitting properly, a clogged pipetta, maybe a clot, unstable temperature and incubation, unstable power supply, poor operator technique, improper mixing of processed samples, incorrect reconstitution of controlled material. These are all reasons for random errors. So, again like we talked about it in the systematic errors, you have to understand each of these points correctly and maybe there is training required, improper mixed dissolved reagents you have to train your technician. Air bubbles in reagent lines. So, what are the causes? Why the air bubbles are getting trapped? Clouds. Why are clouds happening? So, is there a problem in your sample collection? So, you need to look at the root cause of all these problems. Paper tips not fitting properly. Why is in their training? Why is in their availability of fitting tips? And temperature and incubation problems. Look for the room temperature uh, requirements power supply, if there is fluctuations and then sudden fluctuations, why is in there a stabilizing system there? 
and operator technique, why you need to give training, mixing of process samples, sample mixing is again very important before preparation of samples like uh, if you have a, a serum sample getting analyzed and if you have centrifuged it too quickly there could be fibrin threads and that is going to go and block the probe. Very simple things that you can train your technician and avoid such problems and cleaning of the preventive maintenance of the equipment not being done on a day. So, all these things can lead to imprecisions on, and random errors. Every effort should be made to detect the random errors so that technician should be enabled to detect it and also to understand how to take the corrective action, the troubleshooting and the corrective action. Thank you very much.